Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 7.1, diet. As always, we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 7.1, you need to describe what is meant by the term balanced diet, state the main dietary sources and describe the importance of the different nutrient groups, and state the causes of scurvy and rickets. There's no extended supplement for this lesson. So a balanced diet is a diet that contains all the essential nutrients in the correct proportions to maintain good health. And the nutrient groups are carbohydrate, fat, protein, vitamins, minerals, fiber, and water. Carbohydrates are the sugars, starches, and fibers found in fruits, grains, and vegetables. They're made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and their main role is as a quick and readily available source of energy. Complex molecules like starch are broken down by enzymes into simple sugars like fructose and glucose, which are oxidized through respiration into carbon dioxide and water. Now, not all carbohydrates provide energy. For example, cellulose that makes up the cell walls of plant cells is indigestible and therefore provides little in the way of nutrition. It is, however, an important source of dietary fiber, which we'll return to in just a moment. If carbohydrate consumption exceeds an individual's short-term energy requirements, excess glucose is converted into another carbohydrate molecule called glycogen and stored in the muscles and liver. If glycogen stores are full, the glucose is turned into fat instead and stored in cells called adipocytes. Carbohydrate-rich foods include starchy root vegetables, bread, rice, pasta, corn, fruit, breakfast cereals, and anything containing sugar. Like carbohydrates, fats and oils are made of the elements carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, and are oxidized through respiration into carbon dioxide and water. They are far more energy dense than carbohydrates and proteins, however, providing around 37 kilojoules, or 9 kilocalories per gram. Excess fats are stored in adipose tissue, either directly under the skin or surrounding the organs in the abdomen. They form the phospholipid bilayer of cell membranes, a substance called myelin which speeds up the transmission of nerve impulses, and the structure of certain hormones including testosterone, estrogen, and cortisol. They're also required for the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K, and help to insulate the body against heat loss. Dietary sources include animal fats like butter, cream, egg yolks, lard, and tallow, and plant oils found in fruits, seeds, and nuts. Proteins are broken down by digestion into smaller molecules called amino acids, which are subsequently used to build proteins and tissues, including those of the skin, muscle, blood, and bones. All amino acids are made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, and some contain sulfur and phosphorus as well. Proteins form the major structural components of all cells, including cell membranes, mitochondria, ribosomes, and chromosomes, as well as molecules like enzymes, hormones, and hemoglobin. Unlike fats and carbohydrates, excess amino acids cannot be retained. Instead, they're converted into glycogen in the liver, which is either oxidized or stored for later use. In this way, a gram of protein provides around 17 kilojoules or 4 kilocalories of energy, which is about the same as carbohydrate. Dietary sources include meat, eggs, dairy products, seafood, nuts, and pulses, including beans, peas, and lentils. Vitamins are substances that the body needs in small quantities to develop and function correctly. Not getting enough of a given vitamin may lead to the development of a vitamin deficiency disease, which can typically be cured by simply adding the vitamin back into the diet. You need to know more about two specific vitamins, C and D. So vitamin C, otherwise known as ascorbic acid, is a water-soluble vitamin found in citrus fruits, tomatoes, potatoes, and green vegetables. It's involved in the formation of an important protein called collagen, used to make skin, tendons, ligaments, and the walls of blood vessels. It also strengthens the gums and soft tissues in the mouth, which helps to keep the teeth firmly in place. A sustained lack of vitamin C in the diet can lead to scurvy, a disease that famously afflicted sailors of the past who had no access to fresh food at sea. Scurvy is characterized by the improper formation of collagen, which causes bleeding under the skin, swollen, bleeding gums, and even the loss of teeth. Vitamin D is the only vitamin that the body can synthesize, and this occurs in the skin using UV radiation from sunlight. However, people who live a significant distance north or south of the equator are deprived of sunlight for much of the year, and may become deficient unless they consume the vitamin in the form of foods like oily fish, red meat, butter, milk, cheese, and eggs. 
The deficiency disease associated with vitamin D is called rickets. Now bone is made largely of calcium phosphate and vitamin D facilitates the absorption of calcium and phosphorus through the gut wall. This means that a lack of vitamin D cuts off the supply of these minerals to the bone, affecting the way in which the tissue is formed. Rickets is characterized by the softening of bones in children and the deformation of the bones in the legs due to the weight of the body. In adults, a vitamin D deficiency results in a reduction in bone density known as osteopenia, and an increased risk of fractures. Mineral ions, sometimes referred to as mineral salts, are needed in small quantities and are essential for a wide range of bodily functions. There are two you need to know about, iron and calcium. So iron is found in red meat, organ meats, eggs, nuts, and green leafy vegetables. It forms part of the molecule hemoglobin, which is found in the red blood cells and transports oxygen throughout the body. Not consuming enough iron in the diet therefore restricts red blood cell formation, leading to a reduction in red blood cell concentration and the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. This condition is known as anemia. The respiring tissues are deprived of oxygen, so those suffering with the condition often feel tired, weak, and irritable. Calcium is found in dairy products, leafy greens, and hard water, which is water that has a high mineral content. It assists with blood clotting when vessels are broken and plays a vital role in muscle contractions and the transmission of nerve impulses. In addition, calcium in the form of calcium phosphate is essential for the development of bone tissue, so not consuming enough can lead to rickets in children and osteopenia in adults. Other symptoms of a calcium deficiency include weak and brittle nails, teeth that are easily broken, and muscle cramps. Dietary fibre, otherwise known as roughage, is found in various plant foods including fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Cellulose, which makes up the cell walls in plant cells, cannot be digested as we don't produce the enzymes required to break it down. It increases the contents of the colon and helps it to retain water, which in turn softens the feces and reduces the time it takes for undigested food to pass out of the body. This is thought to reduce constipation and keep the colon healthy. The final nutrient is water, which accounts for 70% or more of total cell mass. It's the main component of the cytoplasm, as well as the blood plasma, lymph fluid, and tissue fluid. It acts as a solvent for digested foods, minerals, and vitamins, and waste products like excess salt and urea, which are removed from the body in a solution by the kidneys. It's involved in many chemical reactions in cells, and aids digestion, as it helps to break down insoluble food molecules into soluble ones by a chemical reaction called hydrolysis. It then dissolves the product so that they can pass through the intestinal wall and into the bloodstream. Water is lost through sweating, evaporation, urination and breathing, and must therefore be regularly replaced. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 7.1, diet. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 7.2, digestive system.